There's three reasons why Dream is so successful. And the first is that he's a purple cow, but we're gonna get into that later. If you don't know who Dream is, over the past three years, he became one of the most famous people on the internet. Hello, Dream. Dream is here. Oh my God, it's Dream. But no one knew what he looked like, not even his closest friends. I have never seen his face before. No joke. So when Dream actually took off his mask Hi. and revealed his face, that took over the internet. And over 38 million people have actually watched that video of him oh, taking off his mask. We're gonna be breaking down the three tactics that Dream used to explode on YouTube. And whether or not you're a Minecraft streamer or you're even familiar with him, these tactics can be super helpful for you as a creative. Also, according to YouTube statistics, only a small percentage of people that watch our videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up enjoying this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe. All right, so this is a text that I got last week from my sister-in-law, Lauren. She said, I don't understand dream. This week, you'll have to explain it to me. I'm so old. That's probably a sentiment a lot of people had when dream completely took over the internet with his face reveal. So who is dream? So dream, if you're unfamiliar with him, he's a Minecraft streamer. He streams himself playing Minecraft on his YouTube channel. And he quickly stuck out from the rest of the streamers who are playing Minecraft, because it is a very large community. Now, yeah, Minecraft is one of the most popular games, and if not the most popular game in the world, and Minecraft videos are an incredibly popular genre of YouTube video. So it's almost a question of, well, if you're gonna make Minecraft videos, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. And Dream actually did something really different. Yeah, so he is a developer and a coder, and he was able to create situations and worlds within Minecraft that no one had ever seen before. So Minecraft, but gravity flips upside down every minute. And that's actually the first tactic that we recognize that Dream used to build this massive audience. And that tactic is to be a purple cow. Excuse me? That might sound strange. Should we have Seth explain it to them? Yeah, so Seth Godin, who's a marketer and a writer, has this concept of the purple cow, and it's a marketing concept, but it really applies to what Dream did to grow on YouTube. Consumers don't care about you at all. They just don't care. Part of the reason is they got way more choices than they used to and way less time. And in a world where we have too many choices and too little time, the obvious thing to do is just ignore stuff. And my parable here is you're driving down the road and you see a cow and you keep driving. Because you've seen cows before, cows are invisible, cows are boring. Who's gonna stop and pull over and say, oh, look, a cow? Nobody. <laughs> if the cow was purple, you'd notice it. The thing that's gonna decide what gets talked about, what gets done, what gets changed, what gets purchased, what gets built, is is it remarkable? And remarkable is a really cool word because we think it just means neat, but it also means worth making a remark about. And I think no matter what type of creator you are right now, most likely you're facing a lot of competition and it's really hard to stand out, but that's actually what you should prioritize. How can you be not necessarily better, but different? I mean, you can see by the quality of this TED talk that this concept from Seth Godin is old. It's timeless. The concept of being remarkable, the concept of, of standing out, the concept that consumers don't have a lot of time, that is a concept that existed pre-YouTube. And what Dream really did was say, okay, if there's this many Minecraft videos, you know, Minecraft, but gravity is flipped every minute, all of a sudden that's the purple cow. This video, we coded it so that at random times, the gravity flips upside down. Our goal, is to beat the game. These are things that other Minecraft streamers couldn't necessarily do because they weren't coders. Not only are you gonna click on that and watch it, but he's actually giving you the sentence that you can go say to another friend. So, hey, did you see that video where lava is falling from the sky? So I think you have to, as a creator, think about the remark that someone is going to make about your video. Because at the end of the day, the way ideas spread, the way that videos spread is actually through word of mouth. When we interviewed Mr. Beast, yeah. what was remarkable about it was that it was the only interview with yeah, Mr. Beast for true. the most part. Now he went on a podcast tour, there's a lot. So you have to try and find that area where you can stand out. You look at Andrew Schultz, mm -hmm. their episode, it was four hours long. Right. That's remarkable. Have you seen the episode with Mr. Beast that's four hours long? It's true. So there's always ways to sort of iterate and maintain that purple cow essence. So be a purple cow. Yeah. By the way, Colin, 
we got this package from Dream. Mm -hmm. We bought the package. I don't want to make it sound like he sent it to us. We purchased it. Sounded this. way cooler when yeah, you just yeah yeah. Okay, I'll go back to that. We got this package from Dream. <laughs> Uh, and we don't know what's inside of this, but we are going to open it at the end of this episode. Thanks, Dream. So the other thing that makes him remarkable is the fact that he's faceless. I mean, that's obvious, right? Your favorite streamers, your favorite gamers, you had some sense of what they looked like. You could develop relationships with them, you could develop you know, emotions and attach them to this face. But Dream being faceless was another one of those things where it's like he's a Minecraft creator and he doesn't have a face or he's got a blob as a face. Smiley blob. I think what's really interesting about Dream is that it was accidental. It, yeah. it was not deliberately written into his plan that he would be faceless. He really says it's a product of the pandemic, that that's just when he started to take off was 2020 and everyone already was wearing masks. And if you're a Minecraft streamer, you don't have to show your face. And mm -hmm. it just started to become a thing. He didn't choose his face as his avatar, he chose this logo. And yeah. then started to realize, oh wait, this is adding a layer of intrigue mm -hmm. for my audience. And the fact that Dream was faceless for so long is tactic number two, which is have a mystery box. That probably makes no sense right now, but we are gonna play this clip from director J.J. Abrams that will explain it. Tannen's mystery magic box. I bought this decades ago, and I'm not kidding. If you look at this, you'll see uh, it's never been opened. Now, I was looking at this, it was in my office, and it, as it always is on the shelf, and I was thinking, why? Have I not opened this? And I realized that I haven't opened it because it represents something important. Infinite possibility. It represents hope. It represents potential. The withholding of information, doing that intentionally, is much more uh, engaging, whether it's like the shark in Jaws. If Spielberg's you know, mechanical shark Bruce had worked, it would not have been remotely as scary. You would have seen it too much. In Alien, they never really show the alien terrifying. Even in a movie like The Graduate, they're having that date, remember, and they're in the car and, and, and it's loud and so they put the top up. You don't hear anything they're saying. You, you can't hear a word, but it's the most romantic date ever and you love it because you don't hear it. I love the premise that the shark in Jaws is scarier because you never see the shark. And when you say it's scarier, it's actually that the audience has interpreted it to As, be scarier. Sure, sure, it implies yeah. a level of work that the audience has to do to enjoy the story. And that's kind of what Dream did. There was all this mystique and conversation around who is he? Not knowing what Dream looked like created this mystery box for the entire audience that they got to fill in themselves. And they got to interpret, you know, who Dream was and, and almost even place their own experience into this person. And that's all of a sudden developing a deeper relationship because your, your mind is, is connecting the dots. Another really great example in The Office. Yes. When Pam takes off her mic to go hug Michael mm -hmm. on Michael's last episode. I mean, the fact that you can't hear their last conversation makes it that much better it becomes as powerful as you want that moment to be. Mm -hmm. Not as powerful as maybe the writers were going to write it. Yeah. I also think that as the face reveal started to get closer and closer, he FaceTimed creators and they, he had them film their, their own reactions where they're looking at their phone and then he calls them they, their reaction to seeing his face for the first time. So all of a sudden you, you have this unclosed loop, right? Which is what does this guy look like? You don't know. And your curiosity is killing you for two years plus. And then as the moment's getting closer and closer, he's closing that loop, but not all the way to build the anticipation. And the mystery box is slowly opening, right? So you're, you're peeking in a little bit to other people's reactions to seeing what's in the mystery box. That's such good marketing. Yeah, and I think as a creator, what you should be thinking about is, how can you use omission as a storytelling tool? Right. How can you sometimes not give the audience everything? Like this, we don't know what's in this bag, right? But, but it came directly from Dream himself. <laughs> that's right. And if someone was here right now, they opened it, looked at it, and had a reaction, that actually makes it even more interesting. So now I think it's interesting to think about the fact that by omitting his face, that was what brought him a lot of success. Now he decides to reveal his true identity. Was that the right move? Right. You know, there's a couple reasons that he states why he did this. Um, number one, he, he mentioned he felt like there wasn't much else he could do in Minecraft. Like he had already kind of done everything that he could do. Let alone the dream SMP, which we have not even touched on. 
right? Like That's it wasn't true. that he was just making yeah. unique situations. Yeah. He also had a server that became a world for live storytelling. Again, something that was unique to Minecraft at the time. Listen, and it, then created all of these characters hold, that became hold yourself. incredibly famous. I'm just saying, the I Dream SMP is this entire I, other thing. I agree. That I it, can't believe we haven't even mentioned this far in the episode. I'm just going to ask that someone in the comments explains the Dream SMP to everyone else because it will take us too long to try and explain it. We'll pin the best explanation of the Dream SMP. Bet you there's someone watching going, the Dream SMP. <laughs> yeah, the whole the time. SMP. Yeah, yeah, screaming. Yeah, screaming. Yeah, yeah, the screen. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the other thing that he, he mentions about why he revealed his face is actually one of the most human things you could want, which is just that. So this episode is sponsored by Jelly Smack. Now, if you don't know by now, Jelly Smack is the global creator company that helps creators find new audiences and new revenue. So if you're a creator like us that makes YouTube videos, Jelly Smack will actually partner with you to take your YouTube videos, use their advanced AI and their full team of expert editors to actually cut those videos into different formats for different platforms. And some of these platforms you might not even know you can make money on, like Snapchat. As one of the biggest publishers on Snap, Jelly Smack is unlocking a completely new monetizable platform for creators. They manage over a hundred Snapchat Discover shows and have launched shows for creators like Hope Scope, Christina Randall, and they helped Phil DeFranco bring his news show to Snapchat. That show has over 500,000 subs on Snap and over a billion views, and it's actually generating revenue for Phil. Content that he's already made is making him money on another platform. Now, the way Jelly Smack works is it's a true partnership. It's a revenue share, so they only make money when you make money. That's why working with Jelly Smack is really beneficial and why some of the biggest creators in the world trust Jelly Smack to take their content across platforms. So if you're interested, head over to jellysmack.com, click get in touch and tell them that Colin and Samir sent you. All right, back to the episode. So the other thing that he, he mentions about why he revealed his face is actually one of the most human things you could want, which is just that he wanted to hang out with his friends. Just get out in the world, be an actual creator, be a person, say hi to my friends finally. And that really is tactic number three, build a bridge. And what that means is like your digital world should be a bridge to your physical world. Dream talks about the concept that he's going to do IRL videos. And this concept of IRL, meaning in real life, is actually explored in this TED talk by Jordan Frith. There's probably no phrase that annoys me more than in real life. For one thing, as someone who got in many disagreements with my ex-girlfriend over Facebook Messenger, I can assure you that was very real. It wasn't less real because it happened online. It had real consequences in the physical world. Anyone who's been cyberbullied, the fact that it happens on Facebook doesn't make it any better. It's still real life. It affects a physical body. His concept here is that the term IRL or in real life suggests that there's two separate worlds, the digital world and, and the real life world. But actually, that's not true. We, we actually exist in a hybrid space, as he calls it. So, you know, with Dream primarily existing in cyberspace or in the digital world. Cyberspace. Yeah, cyberspace. This is a 90s term. Uh, existing in cyberspace or, you know, the digital world, it's actually impossible there's no world where he can just exist there because it's, it's, it, these worlds coexist. It was affecting his physical life by not revealing sure. his face. Yeah. I mean, I read an article somewhere that he was traveling from Florida to Georgia to go to the dentist so that no one would recognize him. That's Because wild. people knew he was from Orlando. But how would people recognize him? I don't understand that. By his voice. Oh, uh, should have altered his voice. Come on, Dream. <laughs> but that's pretty aggressive. I think yeah. I also read that he would go to Georgia to go to dinner with his mom sometimes. Yeah. Like if you feel that restricted, like you can't go mm -hmm. out to a restaurant in your own hometown, that's clearly this point where your online life is affecting your physical life. They are actually one and the same. Yeah. They have implications. So I think that, you know, the lesson for creators here is that no matter what, whatever you're building digitally from a community perspective, from a brand perspective, you should be thinking about how that interacts with the physical world because they're not two separate things. What did Dream lose by revealing his face? And what did he gain? Let's talk about that. I think there's something really interesting that he lost, which is, like we said, with omitting his face, people got to fill in the gaps with who he was. Mm -hmm. He could be the ultimate superhero across race, socioeconomic mm -hmm. levels. Like He could be whatever you wanted him to be. And 
it's at no fault to him or anything. But once he revealed who he is, you lose some of the mystique and he no longer gets to be the superhero necessarily. He's Clay, a 23 year old from Orlando. Hi, my name is Clay, otherwise known as Dream Online. I think the interesting thing is like, he's going to create a new channel where he's gonna do IRL experiences as Clay. So kind of what has happened is there's two personas that are developing now. There's Dream and there's Clay. What he gained from you know, a business perspective is also he can scale the premise and the concept and the brand of Dream while building the brand of Clay at the same time. I also think he's a, he's a creator of worlds more than he is a creator of videos. He's like Simon Cowell. Okay. Right? No one's ever made that comparison. Simon Cowell is responsible for putting One Direction together. Mm -hmm. And then that became oh, a yeah. world. Yeah. Right? And then some of them went off on their own. Mm -hmm. Dream essentially is responsible for the Dream SMP. And you look at him at, on that panel at TwitchCon, he's all the way at the end. And everyone on that panel is like a member of One Direction. That's right. And at some point, Carl might be Harry Styles. I think Carl is Harry I think Styles. he kind of is Harry yeah. Styles. He grabs the mic for the first time, everyone goes nuts. And I say all of this just to say that I think that actually may be what allows him to have longevity. The fact that his history is being a world builder, not just someone who follows trends and makes mm. videos. Like he builds environments for yeah. communities and creators to exist in all at once. Yeah, I think that's what Dream will continue to be. It's up for debate. What, like, who is Clay? Who is Clay going to become? Who knows? Now you guys have seen my face. Questions over. What does Dream look like? This is me. Unless I'm an actor. Might be an actor. Let's just open the package. Right, Let's yeah, open the package. Yeah. What is in yeah. this package? Here uh, we go. How do you... Do I need something sharp? I would love some scissors. And now, what is this, a bracelet? God, the branding is so strong. Yeah, the green. It's so strong that it's like this brand. Uh, Marilyn, Marilyn, we got it, we got it open. <laughs> you, do you have a dart in your hand? Why do you have it's a Marilyn dart? coming to, <laughs> what if Marilyn just threw <laughs> yeah, the dart yeah. and just, she assassinated like you? Like in uh, old school? Yeah, that would um, be a perfect All right, cow. so this is a bracelet from Dream. Marilyn, you bought this. How yes. much does this cost? And just explain this product to me. What is this? This is Dream's USB bracelet. To buy this USB bracelet, we had to join the Dream Smile Club, which is an annual membership. We got the silver tier for $15.99 to get access to this member-only drop. And the bracelet itself cost $24.99. Would you say that was worth it? I think if you really care about him, it's worth it. Yeah. But it is expensive. It's expensive. Oh, you know what this is? It's that's a snap fun. bracelet. That's fun. That's so good. That brings me back. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's nice. So it's a bracelet... But it's also, what? Did what? I just break it? No. 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 Okay. USB, thumb drive. Yes. It has data on it. All right, cool. All right, let's see what's on this. There's a lot on this. this is it? Oh my God. Baby photos? Childhood emails? Minecraft screenshots? Photos? 500 subscribers? That's cool. This That's is, really cool. This is like a time capsule. That was a photo of a dead rat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, dude. So okay. essentially, this is all just exclusive content. This would be like kind of similar to a Patreon, except his comes with a physical product. Right. Right. Like right. some people pay for a Patreon monthly and you get exclusive photos, behind the scenes, videos. That's essentially what this is, but he's it's just, just so done in a different way that again is remarkable. Yeah. Wow. This is so interesting because he's following the three rules that we just talked about. One, this product is remarkable. You have to talk about it. You know, it's exclusive content, but he did it through a physical piece mm -hmm. that you order, that you get in the mail, that you have to plug into your computer yep. and that experience, right? So that's remarkable already. Also, he uses omission as a storytelling tool. It's a mystery box because even as you plug this in, you don't know what's going to be on it. Yeah. And then you have to explore yourself. It doesn't yeah. say start here or just mm -hmm. watch this video. You're really navigating it on your own. And then he's recognizing that the digital world is a bridge to the physical world. Because again, this is a physical product. It's something that I now get to have in my room as a physical representation or around my wrist as a physical representation of me being a part of this community. And I get to experience and have a physical experience while looking at these, right? Mm -hmm. This guy, Dream, man, he might become like the biggest marketer on the internet. <laughs> he's, he's very smart. He's damn good.
Wow. Okay, so hopefully here at the end of this video, you know more about Dream than when you started this video and you have a better understanding how he actually rose to his fame. And I can't wait to read your explanations of the Dream SMP. All right, see ya.